so you know i woke up this morning asking myself a question what type of photographer do i really want to be but i realized i already know what photographer that i want to be but then i was like maybe i can make a video about this and ask you guys what type of photographer do you want to be Now, before we get started in today's small talk video, I wanna make sure to let you guys know to hit that like button. That really, really helps out the channel. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. This is a growing Fujifilm photography channel. Now, I do these small talks, but I also do vlogs, which I haven't done in a while, like an actual street photography vlog, but I am going to be filming in downtown Atlanta this weekend for a new vlog, which will be out sometime by next week. I think I'm gonna post it on Thursday. I think Thursdays are the days that I will probably post my videos because I need to have a consistent schedule, um, you know, in order to provide you guys with entertainment and videos and actually stick into what I wanted to do with this YouTube. Um, so yeah, just make sure you, you know, hit that like button there that helps this channel out to grow and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Now I know, you know, I'm a novice out here, but you know, give me some time, give me some, g give me a chance. I'll get there. All right, guys, so with that out the way, let's go ahead and get on with the small talk. So we're going to start by the different categories of photography paths you can go. Now, for me, the type of photographer that I am, I am a portrait editorial fashion photographer who also does street photography. So those are kind of like my, my two paths of what I want to bring within my photography. All right, so I'm not gonna go through all of them, but let's go ahead and start off with those first two that I mentioned. So we're gonna begin with portrait photography. Now, portrait photography, it's taking portraits of a person. Um, heck, it can even be an animal, I believe, I think so. Yeah, so it can be anything from a close-up, uh, it can be headshots, wide shots, anything dealing with a person or a group of people. You're taking a portraiture of a human being. And with that, you can kind of take portrait photography in many different avenues. Um, you know, there's fashion, there's documentary style photography. We'll talk about that a little bit separately as well, but you can kind of mix the two together. Um, and, and yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a way of kind of uh, portraying people and, you know, you basically trying to show them in a good light. Now, the thing is with portrait photography, portrait photography is very, very competitive uh, because everyone does it. You know, everyone loves taking pictures of themselves. Everyone likes to be photographed. Um, so it's definitely a, uh, a field that is it's very oversaturated and it's very competitive. And there's so many different ways that people can be a portrait photographer. Um, people can use their mobile phones. Um, without having to spend a load of money to buy an expensive camera. Um, so you also got to keep in mind that um, it's very hard to break through this field. My goal is I want to be on the print. I want to get away from the digital media and be on print and paper. I want to be on the magazines like Vogue or Edson or you know, any others out there. I want to do editorials. Of course, I'm still going to have my pictures on, like, you know, digital media, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, wherever. But that's my goal. It's like I, I, I feel like having your photographs on, on paper, it gives it a certain feel that you just don't get digitally. So if you're someone who doesn't like being in a competitive field or, or trying to find ways to, to up up your art, to get noticed from a lot of other people, then it may not be the fill for you because there's a lot of work you have to do because there's so many creative minds out there. So you have to find something that that will push you out there. Now, of course, you can make this as a hobby. Um, that's perfectly fine, but for someone like me, I'm doing this professionally and I wanna get better at the craft where I can actually have this as a full-time career. So you have to keep that in mind if, if that's what you're thinking of going you know, with your photography. Now, on to street photography. So, street photography, to me, is it's more of an art form. Photography in general is art. With street photography, if you are trying to make photography a full-time career, I don't think you can live off of street photography alone. Um, it's, it's, it's in that, it's in that feel of just, like, just expressing yourself and, and being an artist without actually worrying about or caring about making money. 
street photography to me is very relaxing. With street photography, it's more about you showing the world through your eyes. Street photography is about you getting those candid shots out there in the world on the streets. It doesn't have to be a huge bustling city like New York City. You can be in a small town and take those candid shots and that would be considered street photography. It doesn't even have to have people. You can have um, you know, light and shadows, like how they look on the walls on the streets or the buildings or architecture or the birds or animals that's walking out in the streets. That's what street photography is. It's you getting those candid shots and and trying to portray your vision to the world. Now, there are ways you can make money off of street photography, and that is in the way of print. If you can get a good following, if you have amazing photos, you can start creating your own prints and selling them from your own website or a online store, and you can make a profit off of it if you are making those great photos and you're having people coming you know, in and out of your store and stuff like that, that is a good way that you can make money. I still don't think that would be your sole source of income, but it can definitely be something to you know, add to your bank account a little bit. Now, on to product photography. Now, product photography is a commercial photography where your job is to present a product in the best personal way in the best personal light in order to fulfill your client's goal um, that is product photography so anything dealing with like taking the pictures of a new pair of shoes that came out um, taking that amazing shot of a new perfume line that's coming out anything dealing with products for for the commercial business that's product photography that's it you're not really dealing with any people or anything like that it's you placing props in a certain you know best way to, uh, to show off that product so you can have other people trying to buy it for your clients. Um, product photography is a very, I, I do think it is a very uh, successful um, career that you can get into. Uh, you just gotta be really good at it. Um, me personally, I don't really like product photography. Uh, I do enjoy looking um, at uh, product photography, especially like, you know, just seeing like what people can do. I was like, man, you like, it's just a shoe that's on the desk, but you made it look like it was in this whole other world. Um, I definitely want to buy those shoes now. And then I mentioned earlier, documentary photography. Now, documentary photography is in a way another form of like candid, like art, because with documentary photography, yes, you are you are in a place where people know that you're there. Um, you know, your presence is really known there, but you're documenting the life to life of a person, a group of people, or uh, an environment, or just, just in general, you're, 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 you're trying to show um, the authentic uh, essence of the environment that you're in at that point in time. Um, and usually documentary photographers, they work for some type of newspaper or, um, you know, like a uh, like TV show, you know, I don't know, like National Geographic, or they, they're working for some type of client to document this way of life. And that's how those photographers get paid to do that. Now you can also start your own documentary project. You may not get paid from it, but that's, you know, something you can still do to, to push yourself up there. So you can get hired for those actual like documentary style works. But, uh, but yeah, documentary photography is something that I've, I've kind of wanted to do in the past. Um, if it ever presents itself to me, I might take that offer because, uh, that's, that's also in the same line of street photography in a way. I feel like those two are kind of uh, um, kind of interchangeable. They're, they're a little bit the same. Now, if you really do want to make the big bucks in photography, the best field that you can get into or the best path to say is wedding photography. Wedding photography is very lucrative. You will make a lot of money. Um, I know a lot of good wedding photographers who they first kind of started out wanting to do portraits and editorials and all that, but then found out that, you know, they're not making a lot of money. Um, it just didn't fit their way of life. And then they went ahead and they sacrificed being creative and went to wedding photography. I'll talk about that in a little bit. So wedding photography is, is you being at the wedding and you are taking pictures of the wedding 
and the, of the bride and groom and making sure you're taking those key moments, those key moments for your clients. And that's basically your job. In essence, that is basically it. But I do believe it is one of the hardest uh, 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 jobs to have because you got to make sure you have your equipment. You got to make sure you are on point. You got to make sure you're not missing those crucial moments. Like if you missed the first kiss or anything like that, you're done for. You're done. But if you get all that stuff done, you're going to make some good money because, uh, you know, the prices that a lot of wedding photographers have, they may bank. Um, but it is a very, uh, very busy job, which is why a lot of people can live off of that because, you know, they're paying for so much and, uh, you know, a lot of their time is taken out of editing these photos uh, to make them the best way possible. Um, you know, I've been to my friend's wedding and one of the main photographers also had an assistant photographer. Um, and a lot of them do do that. There's a lot of people that have assistant photographers because there's just a lot of stuff you can't really take just as one person. Um, you know, and, and a lot of those photographers have two cameras with them. They have multiple, multiple amount of batteries, um, different lenses, uh, flashes, uh, camera stands, like everything. It is like a full production thing, um, especially the bigger the wedding is. So yeah, if that's something you want to do, perfect, go ahead and do it. Now, the one thing is that I don't like about wedding photography is that you can't be very creative. And because it is a wedding, there's so much you can you can try to do to be creative, but at the end of the day, you're just taking pictures of the wedding's family, their friends, and the bride and groom. Now, if you're someone who loves to travel or loves seeing, you know, the nice landscape views of the world or, you know, wherever, so I'm going to put these two together. That's landscape photography and travel photography. Those are two different things, but they can kind of work in the same way. But basically, landscape photography is taking those landscape shots of, of the landscape, of the world, whatever. It could be a cityscape or it could be nature. It could be the mountains, the hills, the forest, anything dealing with wide shots. This is where you need those ultra-wide lenses to, in order to get those pictures. And a lot of landscape photographers, they work in the field of print. They print these photos. They sell them out and they make good money off of them. Travel photography, most of the time you're working for clients to travel a certain city of the world, taking good pictures of it so they can use that as, as advertisement to get people coming in. So a lot of those people get paid doing that. Now, another thing is too, so here's, here's the thing that I kind of want to talk about. In a way, how to say this? So, like I said, I do street photography. Now let's say down the line, I get a job offered to do a travel photography project or whatever. I could be able to do that because I have those skills from street photography because they're kind of the same. You are taking shots of a city, candid, wherever, somewhere around the world or in your city. It's almost the same thing. So in a way, it's kind of like you doing one path of photography, you're going to gain the skills to do other ones out there. And it's also kind of the same in a way for uh, portrait photography and product or still photography, whereas you have to place your object, your, I'm sorry, your subject in a certain manner to, 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 uh, to grab the audience, to, to, to capture that picture. So in a way, no matter what path you go, they, they can sometimes uh, be interchangeable. They can, they can connect in a way. Um, and that's the beauty of photography. All right, guys, so that's it. That's all I really wanted to talk about. There's a lot more different, you know, types of photography that you can jump into. Uh, I just kind of want to bring up a few that I can think of from the top of my head that I know of or have experience of. Um, like I said, there's a lot more. But basically, I just kind of wanted to, you know, gauge this question out to you guys, my, my audience. And I want to hear from you guys, like, what type of photography are you doing or what type of photography are you trying to be you know and I just want to kind of get that conversation started and like I said that's what small talks is all about this series is basically just me talking to you guys about photography and I want to hear more of you guys thoughts you know definitely comment down below don't be shy I definitely respond to all of them there I'm not a big YouTube channel so I definitely have time to respond back and have a nice conversation with you guys um, but yeah like I said what type of photographer do you want to be? Um, but yeah, that's it guys for today's video, Small Talks. Uh, once again, make sure you hit that like, subscribe to the channel, 
and I'll catch you guys next time. As always, keep the dreams alive. Peace.